This is Sigmund Bloom with your week nine waiver wire quick hitter starting at quarterback. Taysom Hill's the guy. Don't know if he's going to play this week. Don't know if he's going to play again this year. He may platoon with Trevor Simeon, but if he gets the job all to himself, especially this week against Atlanta, there will be fantasy fireworks. Uh, at the very least, you want to play keep away. It's that time of year on the fantasy waiver wire. Daniel Jones will be second. If he's out there with those weapons starting to come back, he's playing better. There could be something there. As we know, he can also add value as a runner. Tyrod Taylor can also add value as a runner. If he comes back, Justin Fields finally added value as a runner. We'll see if that can keep up against the Steelers on Monday night. Jimmy Garoppolo added value as a runner. That might not keep up with him being the starter. Will, and maybe last but not least, Mike White. If he continues to play well on Thursday night against the Colts, maybe he'll be the guy for the rest of the year, maybe longer, as we saw what the Michael LaFleur offense can do. Maybe it's just having another Mike. Uh, in two quarterback leagues, you might want to take a look at Kyle Allen, David Blau. Colt McCoy could start this week. Cooper Rush could start one more week. Trevor Simeon could start one more week or more. P.J. Walker could start this week. At running back, I'm going to go ahead and stick my neck out there for Adrian Peterson. I'm going to pick up Adrian Peterson over Jeremy McNichols. McNichols might have a little more value in PPR leagues, uh, but I think if there's going to be a big hit out of this backfield, it's going to be Peterson. I would put Boston Scott after those guys. Uh, it was the Detroit game, I think, that gave him a lot of value. Ty Johnson's an interesting guy in PPR leagues. If this Jets offense continues to use the running backs as receivers a lot, Going further down the list, Mark Ingram found the fountain of youth, uh, and he's now also got some Alvin Kamara injury upside. Derek Gore looked good. Uh, we'll see when Clyde edwards Elaire comes back, but he has created a committee, Gore has, with Daryl Williams. And uh, at least as a runner, he's the better part of that committee. Carlos Hyde could get a start this week if James Robinson is out with that heel injury. And moving on to wide receiver, uh, check your waiver wire for Tyler Boyd, who bounced back. Check your waiver wire for Jamison Crowder, who could have some lasting value if this offense for the Jets continues to click. And Kadarius Tony, check and see if he was dropped. Sterling Shepard with that quad injury. Tony didn't do much on Monday night, but we already saw what he could do when he's healthy and the offense focuses on him. Randall Cobb comes up next, uh, maybe the main man in the middle of the field for Aaron Rodgers with Robert Tunyon out. Brandon Ayuk. Got starter sh snaps, starter targets, starter routes run. Now Jimmy Garoppolo is back. So IU could have some value in the second half of the year. Jamal Agnew continues to have value, maybe the most value of any Jaguars wide receiver. Not sure what that's worth. And Elijah Moore uh, also coming to life on less than 40% of the snaps. But we know that he has the talent to force himself onto the field more. And then lastly, uh, deep leaks. Tajay Sharp could be the number one wide receiver in Atlanta with Calvin Ridley tending to his mental health. Lastly, at tight end, it's a trade deadline today. So if Evan Ingram gets dealt, let's say, to the Packers, he's the number one guy. If not, he falls down the list. And the number one guy then would be Pat Fryermuth, who had the best play of the day for the Steelers, a game-winning play. And Eric Ebron, see you later. Uh, Fryermuth is going to become a very important target as a rookie for Ben Roethlisberger. Dan Arnold, well, was 54 pass attempts. Not sure how sustainable that is, but at the very least, there's a fantasy pulse there. There could be a fantasy pulse for Logan Thomas after the week nine bye. Let's wait for some more news there when he'll be resuming things for Washington. And then if you need a one-week plug-in against Baltimore when they're solid cornerbacks, Tyler Conklin could be the play for Minnesota as he's had some high points. Uh, if you're replacing TJ Hawkinson, he would probably be the cheapest and best guy to go out there and get that was your week nine waiver wire quick hitter Sigmund Bloom always appreciate the opportunity the privilege the pleasure of serving you at football guys because you're so classy